Hi everyone, I'm Maddie. And I'm Amber. And we're Witches, Witches Talking, Talking Tarot. Tarot. And today we're going to discuss finding the magic in the mundane. or Hidden magic yes, in your hidden life. Yes, hidden ma magic. Or, yeah. you know, something... Magic you can perform in front of people who are not magical people who won't yeah. question it. There it, we go. It was once referred to me as like muggle magic. Like magic you can do in front of muggles and they will never pick it up on Pick, pick it up on, pick up on it. Oh, we both um, did that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Maddie was like, you know, um, I would, this uh, her muggle, like my, you might get made fun of. And I was like, it definitely was presented to me in a Harry Potter vibe, but that's what I loved about it versus was like, eh, about it. Right. Cause like, um, it, the first time I heard anything about muggle magic was muggle altars. So altars that you have out in your home that can't, like they don't, Nobody's going to look at it and be like, oh, you're a witch. Burn them. Uh, <laughs> I wonder what everybody mm -hmm. else thinks about the term muggle. Um, yeah, let us I know. I used to use like, it, and then my husband was like, oh, are you playing Harry Potter? So, so I now I hate it. tongue-in-cheek. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Like, I'm being kind of playful with the term and in being, like, in endearing, embracing of it. I'm not exactly making fun of it when I say tongue in cheek. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense because I'm not making fun of it, but I do use it in a lighthearted manner if that. I get what you're saying. It, I, yeah. I think for me, it's right up there with the term baby witches. It's, it kind of yeah. depends on the witch. Some people hate the term baby witches. Some people call themselves baby witches. Some people hate the term muggles. Yeah. Some people use the term muggles. I think it just depends on the person. Yeah. And, I mean, um, and I'm not saying I hate the term at all. Right, please, right. But yeah, my no, husband it, it was, it was it made, yes, 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 yes. It, it made you rude. feel cringy or something. <laughs> cringy, right? yeah. That's like the yeah. best way to describe it. He's like, yeah. Um, okay, Harry Potter. Damn yeah, it, and I you. won't no. lie, I'm pretty sure that's exactly how my husband responded when I referred to my very first muggle altar that I put out for you all one year. And he's like, what is this, Harry Potter? And I was like, oh, shit. bitch, please, it's my own story. Like, Harry Potter nothing. This is the Amber show, now sir. Now I'm kind of like, damn, like, I want to read Harry Potter. I want to read Harry Potter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, regardless of how you want to look at it, it's right. it's those magics that you perform in your daily you life or not daily life. Someone. You can do it in front of someone and they never know that you're working magic. Exactly. And we're not talking malicious, touching someone <gasps> on the shoulder. We're going to see <gasps> what they're thinking. Right. No, 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 no. This is like for you, for your household, for your life, whatever. Yes. Um, some people who get into the craft are rather young, a little about your daughter's age yeah. 15 to 16 and they live in a household where Excuse it won't me. be accepted because their parents are christian here's maybe <coughs> some things that you can do that's magical yeah while keeping it under the radar unfortunately yeah. we live in a world where some people are married to a significant other who is not supportive and they kind of have to keep that from right. them or they're just in a living situation as a whole where they can't share and this is a good way right. to, to learn how to practice. Or maybe you have guests over. Oh, God, the in-laws are in fucking town. Right. You know and what I mean? I want to be spied out. Like, when I was like, oh, my backyard's so great for all these ritual purposes. And my husband was like, the fucking neighbors will see. And it's like... <sighs> I don't care. I know. <laughs> I've gotten to uh, the point where with my but, craft where I don't care, but unfortunately not everybody is Right, that and, but you have to, understand. again, like, I don't care, but my husband cares, right. and how fair is it of me to put him in the situation where he might have to explain to the neighbors what they saw me doing. Oh, granted, that's my wife. She's just bad shit. Right? <laughs> like, granted, this hasn't stopped me from, like, going out at midnight in my witch hat mm -hmm. to pick... Uh, poke berries under the full moon like I still do that kind of shit but I don't necessarily like hold a full like ritual in the backyard under the moonlight like I might like do it like like Granted, noises la, oh, la, la, la. She oh just I got Tourette's no I do do that <laughs> I will do that I do on like the full moon I'll go out and I'll be like and I'll like say stuff I'll talk to the moon I'll sing to her and I'll have my arms raised and I'll just be in her rays of light <laughs> I'm not laughing because I, know, no, I, I know. I've done it with you yes, and it no, feels it beautiful it feels great I'm thinking but through a like, normie yes, a normie, normie. Yeah, normie I prefer the term yeah. normie <laughs> but like through my neighbor's eyes yes no I'm sure it looks crazy as shit 
But from that same standpoint, I very rarely have like a big fire that I'm like throwing things in while I'm chanting Boom, and it's like purple. Right, exactly. Like I don't do the typical like I'm not out there sky clad. I would love to do you know. all of those things. I would too. <laughs> but but we until can. we have a privacy fence and my husband doesn't care, I have to respect him as much as I, you know, would, you know, be somebody who doesn't want to, you know, like as what am I trying to say? Just as much as I want to do that, I have to respect the fact that he does not want me to because he also has to deal with the repercussions of my actions. And as a partner in a situation, I do understand that. Just as much as, as that is a valid reason to not, as it is a valid reason to not do those things because you yourself do not want to be spied doing them. Right. Is the point I was trying right. to get across, but my brain wouldn't let it Well, and I want to say this as well. Again, unfortunately, um, maybe it's dangerous for you to practice. That, that is true. Know. Like... There was a fucking Tennessee. Tennessee. My husband showed me a fucking article about a Baptist preacher in Tennessee found six witches in his congregation. Oh, I've seen memes six about witches. it. I've seen memes about six it. Six witches. Somebody was like, They're Mark to curse save. his wife or something. Yeah, Mark, Mark save, save from, from the, the witch guy. hunt oh, of God, what's his name. That's great. But yeah, no. Love it, but that's New scary. Orleans, the Bayou. Witch hunts. Fuck oh. now. Witch hunts, witch hunts still Happen. I love the bayou, though. They well, witch hunt? I'm so, sad. Mm, they witch hunt? I think there's witches in the bayou, oh, but in yeah. the deep south, they most certainly do. And I imagine Louisiana is one of those. people. Sorry, up, bayou country is like one of my favorite People uh, grew like, up very kinds of I, I'd say it happens more in the south than the north. People grew up very superstitious. Oh, yeah, south. absolutely. We're so superstitious. Well, we're but just see, like, about some of those I go in the bayou, I think, like, you know, they've got folk magic Greece and, like, voodoo that's been introduced in their oh, lives. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so, like, maybe not necessarily the bayou, but the people that live on the outskirts of the bayou. Oh, absolutely. And you know they be fucking paddling along, like, I mm. need to get my t- cards read. But if anybody knows about this, I'll burn you. Yeah. You know right? what I mean? Yeah. Ah, because that shit happens here. And I know. We live in the fucking Midwest. Um, fucking witch hunters. That shit's scary. Don't support them, guys. I don't think they do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, I'm just saying. The West Pro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. West Pro. I know they haven't oh, been at where you been? Oh we miss you. No, I'm just no, kidding. No. I'm just kidding. I mean you were a lot of fodder for jokes, Westboro. Please Let's be clear. Please understand I was joking. Yes, kidding. everybody knows you were joking. Okay. I'm sure they know you please were joking. Please do. Yeah. We, okay. you know. Anyway, we'll so leave that rainbow flag in front of Westboro. Sorry, I, I love it that so bad pe- for them because it, I feel like a lot of them are just raised that way. Brainwashed. Yeah. That's the only way I can describe it. Yep. Is brainwashed because yep. there are, I've, I've seen a video where somebody had gotten out of that church it was a child well growing up this is how it was and that's how it is in the south especially when it comes but it's so stereotypical or not stereotypical it's so hypocritical in the south you got these really like like christian and i use that with uh what a, air quotes, air quotes yeah. because Heavy air quotes. very against witchcraft i'll the will burn you at the stake if you're a witch but they're practicing witchcraft because that's the culture of the South. You know what I mean? Like, there's a dozen different things I could list. Yeah. But that's for another episode. Right, yeah. Literally. Like, my, I mean, just saying my grandmother, like, yeah. leaves a fucking iron, a cast iron skillet by her door mm-hmm. for protection. Yeah. You tell her that's witchcraft, she'll lose her shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's I so funny it. that in the South... That is, that's yeah. where it's so... We're like the yeah. bottles we were talking about, the mm-hmm. bottle trees. I can't wait for that episode. <laughs> Me too. We won't get into that. Yeah. But... But... So you want to kick off uh, our hidden magic or magic in the mundane with some kitchen witchery, my dear kitchen Absolutely. witch? Absolutely. Um, so one of the... One of, I'm going to say, the best ways you can one practice... One of my favorite the, ways. My favorite yeah. ways. I mean, I'm a kitchen witch, so one of my favorite ways to practice the craft... And it's also really under the radar is season your food, people. Yep. I'm not looking at you when I say that. Season your I food. I do season my food. I know, I know, I, I know. I just you don't know. use a lot of salt, which I've changed. My husband's the same way. Ugh. Like, I think you guys had that conversation. Yeah. So, like, it's like, like, yeah. I don't um, put with, a lot of salt in, but I have changed some things because I did some more. I 
See, yeah, we're gonna get into this more right. because so, yes, yeah, season, season your food. Your and, food. And, right. So you can you can season your food based on the magical intentions you want to put into it, mm -hmm. or you can do it based on the health intentions. Exactly. Or, or both. both. And I'm gonna say win, 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 hedgewitch. Absolutely. And I'm just gonna say yeah. right now, one of the best the ways that I pre I'm my mouth is watering, guys. I'm like five months pregnant <laughs> and I'm fucking hungry. So yep. anyway, one of the best ways that I go about using kitchen witchcraft is choosing a specific, um, what would you call it? Not genre of food? I don't know. When I'm wanting to banish things, uh, uh, I use like hot chili Mexican. peppers. Yes. Ah, yes. Mexican. So tort. So we're yeah. like talking yeah. enchiladas, like peppers, and, okay. peppers yeah. chili powder. We got yeah, that cumin. Got that's the, all great. What's chili re relleno where everything's exactly. stuffed in the pepper and the pepper's like. Is oh, it that's fried or, or is it baked? I don't know. I, think I mean, you can I think do you either, can do way, either but way, but I don't know which one's exactly. a specific chili. But oh, peppers okay. are so, so good specific, for banishing. Like, like, plus, like, there's a lot of paprika and exactly. uh, chili powder. I think you already said chili yeah, powder. Yeah, garlic. Garlic. Oh, okay, onion. yeah. Our onion and garlic are so good for, like, banishing exactly. and heart health. Exactly. Like, twofer. Win-win. Win-win. And I got As say, a hedge witch, I love the twofers. My go-to for prosperity. That'd be Italian. What do they use a lot? In basil, basil, oregano, parsley. rosemary, exactly. parsley. Exactly. Yes. All like, them green goats. So tears. like Alfredo, yeah. when I want some uh, like a little mm -hmm. bit of extra prosperity, I got some Alfredo, put a little bit of fucking parsley in there, some basil in there. Fuck yeah. There you go. I mean, I won't lie. Like when I made prosperity my love Alfredo. chicken Kiev, my, my filler, all the herbs were based on like love and right. harmony and prosperity kind of things absolutely. so like we'd be eating in all these good things for our relationship you right know? absolutely um with some garlic for flavor and heart health yo you know there's uh, just and, like you know, so much yeah. you can do there is so much like you can even like do food for protection too <laughs> maybe france would be like love just because everybody thinks Paris you know what I yeah mean? We. well and <laughs> they use a lot of cream sauce and like oh well, yeah I, I mean, well, I'm sorry, but like cream sauce in and of itself is not exactly phallic, but it's what comes up. You know what I mean? Uh, like, do they eat clams? I don't oh, know. Oh, wait, it's an oyster thing, not clams. <laughs> I mean, shellfish in general, you know, as far as right, I'm concerned, right. so mussels, clams, right. uh, snails. Oysters. Those Sna aren't they fish, do eat snails. but they are a thing. Fucking love me some escargot. Are, is that good? shit is good. I want to try it. If it's so cooked right, it's good. If it's cooked wrong, it's What's rubbery as fuck. What's the texture? Is it well, like, if it's cooked right, it's good. If it's not, it's rubbery. Is it similar to octopus? Octopus <laughs> is very, like, rubbery if it's... <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, hmm. It's been a very long time since I've had good escargot. So what would I've you label? I've had shitty escargot as the most right. recent. And they were rubbery. Yeah, it was Arkansas, I think, was the last time um, I had it, but yeah. So what would you label seafood, then? Now that I think about it, I guess it really depends on, like... Well, I mean, A, if you are an ocean witch, seafood, you would use... You can... Yeah, exactly. Like, that shit lives in what you thrive on. Connecting Fish with live in water. They exist within water. That passes through their entire body. It becomes part of them. Like, when we ate fish in Florida that... It wasn't what my husband had caught. I think it's what my aunt had purchased from the farmer's market that was on the fish dock. And it's stuff that was caught that day. And then I cooked it that oh, night. Yeah. I just put some butter in the pan. There was so much butter salt. Butter has its own thing. I don't know what it's called. I, 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 mm. I can't think of any specific properties, but I know it has its own property. Well, I think of butter as a offering in and of itself. So, like, in a way, it's an offering to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that okay. makes sense. I get that. I get that. Like, I'm endowing myself with the privilege of these added calories. Because mm -hmm. as right. I, so you, I, would think I try to catch calories kind anywhere of like I can. Kind of like prosperity, but, yeah. maybe? Because Yeah, definitely. Because I know it's then, very fairy yes. oriented. Well, and also fey energy. Back then, butter offering. was. It's uh, yeah, you it's know, like it's special. Like, yes, it's, if you've got butter, you're well off. Right, exactly, and yeah. it was fattening, and you needed mm -hmm. the fat to stay warm. Yeah, but when I cooked this fish and just butter, there was so much salt from the ocean water in the fish's flesh because the fish lived in the fucking ocean. Mm -hmm. You could taste the salt. It didn't need salt. It was yeah. salty from the ocean. So like. I've never if, tried it. You know, water. so uh huh. Is it really salty? Ocean water? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Is oh, it yeah. like the saltiest thing? Yeah. 
I don't drink it. I mean, I don't want to drink it, but yeah. low-key is like, I stick my tongue in there. <laughs> I mean, you have to taste it. I've got to try it once. I mean, like, get, you know, put your arm in, lick your well, arm. Well, I've read books it. where people are, like, clamming and they'll lick the salt from their fingers because it'll, like, dry or something. Is it that salty? I guess if you're spending that much time in it. I mean, it was, like, a long time. It was a, a book that took place in, like, the, the Game of Thrones era. So I imagine they probably were because that was their job. Right, you know yeah. I mean? And, I mean, I'm sure there's people, like, in the Northeast that spend enough time. I've never spent that much time. Also, I bet it has to do with, like, the water. Like, water up north probably does leave you saltier, whereas the warmer water down south that I'm used to swimming in, uh -huh. the, wa uh, the water's so warm, the salt is pretty dissolved. Huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, does that make sense? Yeah, and it was a European like, thing, so I yeah, imagine it's I, cold. Yeah, exactly, because I'm pretty sure, like, up north you can find, like, salt Salt the on beach. the banks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, but I've only been a, to the ocean up north a couple times, and I don't like it because it's cold. Yeah, what's the point? I'm a weenie. No, no, I'm no. I'm spoiled when it comes to the ocean, like... I'm spoiled. Like, when we went up to Massachusetts, I was like, this shit's cold, I'm not getting in there. I took my nephew by the hand. He was like three years old. We walked out and we stood in the, the beach waves mm -hmm. on our feet until he couldn't stand it anymore because it was so cold. And then we'd walk up the beach Aww, and warm up. Funny. Yeah. 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 It was super cute. But that was as much as I was getting in the water. Like my daughters were, they weren't swimming. swimming. Oh my goodness. It was like cold. It was fucking Massachusetts in like April or May. Oh my gosh. That sounds freezing. Oh, it was. It was. And I'm a Texas, Florida beachgoer, so that was not beach water for me. <laughs> but my kids are of the mind that they're like, if we're near the beach, we're going in the water. And I'm like, I'm an adult and I no longer care. If I'm near the beach, I'm going to the beach. I don't have to get in the water anymore for the satisfaction. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, and the thing with Kitchen Magic as well yeah. is you can add to your drinks. Like yes. Like, we were talking about fruit waters. Yes. Um, you can put basil and strawberry for yes. prosperity. and Lemon and... Um, you can do lemon rosemary? Yeah. Lemon um, rosemary. You could do that for... I would think that would be an basil. energizer. I was kind of thinking lemon and oregano would be really nice together. And it would be a nice cleansing thing. Because right. oregano's got some good cleansing properties. Right. And lemon. Mm -hmm. You know. Plus, like like all, like all, I've said before, all fruits are... Uh, well, all fruit... Citrus fruit stuff is good for your skin. So. When I think energizer, like like a, a spiritual boost, I definitely think citrus. Yeah. You can put orange in your water or lemon yeah. or lemon and orange. Or, or if lime. you are like that grapefruit. Ew. Sorry, I am not a grapefruit no. fan. Yeah, you said that you guys ate it with salt. That's weird. My parents. That's my so parents. Weird. My parents. Why salt and not sugar? They hated themselves. I don't know. Oh my gosh. I only grossest. know to eat it with sugar. And one time uh. Ryson and I got grapefruit juice from the store. <laughs> It was uh, the really nice orange juice brand. I can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, we get it. And I'm like, oh, shit, this is about to be bussing. Like, like they probably put sugar in it, right? No. No. Bryson took a big-ass swig Ooh. and literally was like, Hah! I but like almost threw I up. I hate was, grapefruit. It's it was disgusting. literally marketed like orange juice, so I thought there was yeah. gonna be mm -mm. sugar in it. Oh my god! He was no. like, he <laughs> took like three swigs before he realized what was going on, and then he stopped and goes, Hah! and I was like, oh my god, are you okay? And he's like, there's no sugar in that. That was just straight grapefruit juice. I'll never forget that. Not He's like, me. that was no. fucking disgusting. But, you know, when you say an energizing <laughs> fruit water, I think orange and strawberry is great. Oh, orange and strawberry taste so good together. Good. And strawberry's got that, like, summer energy. Oh, and absolutely. orange has that sun energy. Yes. I, like, I love that. There's like, so many for, things There's you so can many do. different And ways. you can yeah. freeze them and, for the, oh, yeah. to, or you can and put you, them in juice or something. Oh, for sure. I don't know. Yeah, how would or, you freeze them? Yeah, how would you freeze them? Like, would you put them in juice? What would you use as a base? To specifically to freeze the the fruit water. Well, fruit well, whatever you oh, know, fruit whatever. Fruit purees, so, I guess. Uh, purees, too. or you could chop your fruit. 
fruit very finely. Uh -huh. Say that a shit ton of times <laughs> fast, please. Um, but you could chop it finely, and then you could use ice cube trays and have little ice oh, cubes. Oh, put them in your, your drink. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Or, I mean, I guess, like, you could pack the trays full of fruit and then just pour enough water over it to hold it together as an ice cube. Yeah, absolutely. And then put it in your big cup of water, and it would have a lot of fruit to go Oh, yeah. There. I think that's I think a that would be great. And no one will know. so good. Everything and nobody would know that you've got all these intentions. They're just exactly. like, wow, look at that healthy bitch. Right. And, you know, with your coffee or your tea, you right. can stir intentions in. Or some people, like, I like to whisper my intentions into my coffee before I consume it. I do Like, both. I breathe it in. Nice. Yeah. I, I like yeah. to add it both. Like, as I'm stirring, I'm whispering. Well, you I think know. you've seen me make my coffee. I rarely stir it with a spoon, so... Yeah, I, I like to use gravity to, I just, I It like, looks cool. Like, my teenagers take off with the spoons all the time. We very rarely have spoons available. Yeah, so you I've know, my house is like stirring. that with the forks right now. I only have two forks. Where the fuck are my forks? We just bought, like, a thing. Right, it's just where do they go? go? It's the Fae. They're like, I'll just take this. Uh, see why I, Silver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What Fame takes mafia. Them, they right? take their money one we'll way or another. We'll just take that. Um, so mm. we've also got household magic. Basic yes. household magic. This is cool. Love household one magic. One of the things I mentioned to Amber was you have some people coming over. You still want to practice a little bit. Light a white candle. This doesn't have to be a tea light candle. This can be a scented white candle. Or a pillar candle. Or a pillar candle. People come in. They think, oh, this is classy. And, oh, this smells really good. <laughs> um... But really, you're burning away any negative energy they oh, may be yeah. bringing in along with them. Yeah, and you could have an incense going along with it, like oh, frankincense absolutely. for protection and cleansing, mm -hmm. or sage mm -hmm. incense for protection and cleansing, mm -hmm. or a lavender for calming. If you know somebody's coming over that maybe mm -hmm. you'll kind of get your energy a little too up, like yeah. maybe you don't look forward to visits from fill in the blank. Right. You know? So let's... <laughs> let's uh, Light a, uh, or I'm trying to think of like a nice way to send people away. Maybe be like, oh, put your broom upside down. Why is your broom upside down? Huh. I don't know. I didn't even realize it. Huh. That's strange. That's strange. Well, you guys, uh, see you later. See you. Have a good night. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um, what's another? Uh, can you imagine? I'm so sorry, but can you imagine being at someone's fucking house, just talk and have a conversation, and then this bitch just randomly like turns their broom upside down? Can you just be like, Huh, how peculiar. Yeah, because again, huh. like, this is not drawing attention. <laughs> right, um, no, right. no, I'm just um, thinking. And I have read tricks about things you can do, but now, like, they're out of my brain. I feel like there's something you can do with salt when you're ready for guests to leave. Um, like, you, like, sprinkle salt somewhere, and it's, you know, it's supposed to help get get rid of guests, but I can't. It's, like, right, right, right. there. But I can't but remember. But sweeping it. as a whole is a good yeah, cleansing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And and if you sweep with intention, like, oh, I'm just gonna sweep up in the kitchen real quick. But really, you're sweeping your guests out. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh then da it is oh magic. damn! I accidentally spilt this salt. Yeah, sweep exactly. it up exactly. <laughs> and you know, you know what you're doing. You're working your magic. Everybody uh -huh. else sees you spe sweeping Sweet. something up because it's late at night. Right. Because you and then something. maybe they start to realize, like, oh. It's late. They're cleaning up. Right. And Maybe. your magic is working. Um, there's also... But um, in addition, like in your cleaning, you can do mundane or you can do magical things that look mundane. So mm -hmm. We've talked before about orange uh, orange cleaner, whatever it's called, mm -hmm. orange glow and pine sol both already have magical properties right in there. They have Excellent. natural things and you can just add your intentions while you're washing, while you're cleaning and spread those things throughout your house. So if your mother-in-law's in town or mm -hmm. your sister-in-law is visiting and she doesn't know that you're a practice, practitioner. Well, they also have lavender you know? cleaner as oh, well. Oh yeah, they do. Walmart. They have peppermint for prosperity. Right. So maybe you want to literally, you're trying to wash your walls with money, but you got company around and you can't be all like, me about or you're it. trying to make a sale because <laughs> right? they're over there. You're like, yeah, this is my Avon party. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. peppermint. Yeah. Clean that up. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> you know what I or mean? Or just like light a peppermint tea light real quick. Absolutely. Nobody knows. You're just adding to the ambiance. Exactly. But you know because it's your intention and it's mm -hmm. something you can do 
out there in front of everybody that nobody knows you're doing is mm -hmm. something magical, except maybe your magical friends. No, or I you're soon to be magical friends because you don't know they're magical, but they mm -hmm. can tell now that you are because they watch that shit happen. Right. No. They're like, this bitch just used some orange oil because everybody got upset. -y. Okay. I had <laughs> read somewhere that you can add something to your, your laundry. But I can't remember what exactly it was. Well, I've read do not add essential oils. No, no. It was okay. um, somebody uh, had I've told read, me like, herbs an herb satchel, satchel? in the dryer. Mm -hmm. Not in the not in the washer mm -hmm. because you know mm -hmm. tea yeah, comes yeah, up yeah, with yeah. this thing. Mm -hmm. But in the dryer, kind of like a uh, whatever you call it. I like Fabric that. softener. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I like think that. that'd be I think that would be work. nice. That would be nice. And I mean if you're if you're brave and it's a stone that can handle heat, you could put a crystal in there for specific intentions as well. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I recommend. think lots of witches have done that by accident. Pro you know shit what time. I mean? Uh, oh shit, shit, shit! I left my rose. <laughs> But I'm just saying, like, maybe not a ton so they don't tumble each other. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to put a couple, one or two stones in with that satchel. Or just set them on top. Energy, if or, you don't yeah. want to, you don't feel you don't comfortable. Put them, yeah. Put yeah. them right on top. But, like, and it's, nobody knows. they just like, oh, you you left your rocks laying around. Or, oh, or it's my like, bad. oh, I left my crystal in my pocket, so, or I, I just, found this right. in my pocket, so I had to pull it out, wow, you know. Right, and just put it up um, here, yeah. Because, like, there's all sorts of little ways... In the household, you can add mm -hmm. magic. Like, you can put a line of black salt, or if you don't have black salt, regular salt, at your front door to um, keep ne negativity from crossing like, the Oh, there's supposed to be a winter storm. Well, 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 and if you do just, like, just a thin line of salt at the threshold, mm -hmm. who's even going to notice? Absolutely. Who really looks down like that at the... Well, I will now. <laughs> yeah, I'm like... <laughs> well, but um, you're a magic practitioner. Exactly. Muggles. Muggles. Uh, normies. Normies. Muggles. muggles. Uh, Non-practitioners. No. They wouldn't even notice. They wouldn't even notice. Um, and if they did, they might be like, well, that's strange. One of the things that Amber mentioned earlier when we were talking about this episode that I really liked, I can't believe I forgot, was wearing essential oils. Oh, yeah. That is such a common it, practice it amongst is. people who don't practice and people yes. who do practice. I don't think anybody mm -hmm. would bat an eye. Uh-uh, not at all. Like, mm -hmm. you can wear them in your daily life, like, to you the can, office. You can reapply them. You can all, and all the time. Yeah, notice. nobody even notices because, like, people reapply their lipstick all the time. They reapply their this. They mm -hmm. reapply their... Perfume. Mm -hmm. exactly. So what's the difference in you dabbing on your essential oil, whether it's for protection, exactly. for grounding, for calming, whatever exactly. you may need mm -hmm. magically. You know, like I personally, and I'm sure many other witches have several blends that mm -hmm. they sell for that purpose. Right, so I was going to say, carry it. you could create your own, or yeah. I believe Amber has some in her I shop. Do. I know you have anti-anxiety. What I else do. do you have? Um, well, I have your grounded buddy because it I sounds love funny. that one because it uh, helps you ground, right? Yeah, like it you're is. feeling it's like super way grounding. Out of yep, it's uh -huh. got patchouli and sandalwood, like a lot of things for just like earthy grounding. Mm -hmm. um, then I've got just sage me, which is grounding, it's but like, also oh, this hitch is like getting on my nerves, and right. I need to sage. You know, yeah, what I mean? exactly. No one knows. No one knows. It's just it's predominantly sage and frankincense mm -hmm. with some lavender for psychic protection. Exactly, that's nice. And then yeah, was that it? I'm, well, no, I've got um, I've got some mood enhancer ones. Like, oh, nice. did somebody say citrus is like a bunch of it's orange and lemongrass and so lime you're, we're and working a long day, bergamot in the and, office or, or yeah, in the, the call center, center, and you're like, God, this bitch just cussed me out. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't pay her bill. You yep. know how it is working in the call okay. center. I do. I do. Um, I so do. I need an uplifting thing. I'm exactly. I'm just going to, yeah, or just smell it a little bit. Yeah, just smell it. That's yeah. a great option. And then I've got one called Happy Days because it literally, it's got all the stuff I love in it and it just makes me fucking right. happy. And how much are those? I saw them for $13 plus uh, shipping and handling. Nice. That's not yeah. bad. That's not bad Yeah, they at come all. in glass rollerball hey. bottles. Right, so right, right. I try to do it nice for you. Keep it classy. Classy. Like uh, Maddie said earlier. 
<laughs> Class A with the E with the accent, right? So if oils okay. are not your right idea. Right? <laughs> so if oils are not your thing, you can also carry crystals <laughs> in your pocket. Who the fuck's gonna stick their hand in your pocket? Right. Or who's like, gonna question that you like picked up a random rock and stuck it in your pocket? Right, it for doesn't whatever necessarily reason. have to be an expensive crystal. It can yeah. also be like a rock you feel drawn to outside. Yeah, absolutely. Um but so if you're needing that boost of self love, we've got or, rose quartz, psychic yeah. protection, amethyst. What else can you think of? Um, if you want to be blocking negativity, any of the black stones, so uh, uh, obsidian or mm -hmm. snowflake obsidian, um, onyx, black tourmaline, mm -hmm. nyx? No. J Jet? What's the other? There's like another black I stone. I know what you're talking about. I can't, like, it's. It's on the tip of my brain again. Tip of my brain won't come, but um, yeah, any black stone will repel green negativity. Green adventuring for health and yep. prosperity. Lapis lazuli for creativity and protection. I believe you're going into a um, a job interview. You can't exactly have perform like deep magic, but you can hold a green adventuring in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Or um, pearl for loyalty and fidelity. Nice. Yeah, um, maybe. Not necessarily that you don't trust yourself, but that you're looking for that kind of relationship and you want to attract it to you. Mm -hmm. Pearl would be a very good thing to have with Oh, it. I just thought of another thing. I'm so sorry. I guess I can tell you after this, but didn't people used to tie a red string around their fingers so they wouldn't forget something? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a thing, right? That is a I thing. I barely remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. Is. Where the fuck was everybody getting red strings? Like, she just has a red string around. I don't remember the string being red. I just always remember my fingertip was red after, like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I usually used floss. Oh, really? Well, because as a kid, I was just, like, obsessed with the... Like, you know when you tie something around your finger really tight, and then after a while you take it off and it's got all this... Yes, I saw a picture of, like, this kid who's like, I accidentally fell asleep with this on my finger. Oh, shit! Oh, I do! It looks so scary! Oh, God! I, I, didn't I never... Anything. I never... Oh, oh, God! I'm so glad I got lucky! I never right? thought about like, that. Like, he's just like, I'm gonna fall asleep. And oh, then yeah. he's got his fingers fucking like... Ah! Hi. Yes, I remember that. So now I cannot do that. Um, so Jeez, tell us more I'm glad about I these grew hidden up. altars. Right? Okay, so uh, hidden altars or muggle altars. Altars you could have throughout your house. Like, okay, so my usual altar is a typical, like, you look at it. It's an altar. It's an, it's altar. an altar. It's an altar to a goddess or a deity or it's a pagan altar of some sort, right? Um, I am a very kind of messy, eclectic person, and my altars definitely reflect that. But recently, I found myself having so many altars that I needed to kind of change it, right? And um, I remembered muggle altars, which are altars that you can have out and about. Uh, that not other people are going to just see and know is an, a pagan altar, right? Mm -hmm. um, so muggle altars are exactly that. that it's any which way that you want to display something to honor your ancestors, to honor people a do deity. That. People do that to all the time. Their, they yeah, have exactly. photos of their ancestors, right. or their past uh, right. loved ones. And exactly. maybe they even have a candle by it. Right. And it's like they don't oh, yeah. see anything. They don't, right. And they don't think of it as an ancestor altar, but that's exactly what that Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Um, or people have, you know, they really love the sea, right? And so for sea witches, like... In the bathrooms you, in you're, particular. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And just like having that, the, the seashell decor and everything, like mm -hmm. if you're a sea witch and you choose to use that for your decor, that can be a way of honoring your deities, honoring oh, your path without anybody else ever having to know that it's a magical thing. Right. Um, just like, you know, I was showing, I was like pointing out my ancestor altar earlier because it's got a bunch of eggs on it and it's got my box with a star of David on it and it's got, um, uh, a Freya icon on it, um, and some other, uh, some Celtic iconography stuff on it for, like, my ancestors. And as I was saying to you, like, if you didn't know that was an altar, you wouldn't know it was an altar. You just think it's part of my eclectic decor. Mm -hmm. Same with my Demeter altar. And in my bedroom, there's my Persephone altar, which, again, the way it's set up currently, you can't tell it's an altar, which is fine by me. Um, and it's so small because it's just a shelf on the wall. So for me, the it's reason, also less messy. It's less messy, yeah. 
And people don't fuck with it as much because nobody's laying shit on my altars anymore because there's shelves on the wall. I love so if that. you have a family and you have a problem with people just putting mail and your makeup a McDonald's and cup. your book and a McDonald's cup on your altar, think about a shelf altar. And then it can be a mungle altar. You know, not saying you can't have pentacles everywhere. Like, obviously, if you want to, please do. I love mm -hmm. pentacles. But if you're trying to be low-key about it, you can have a muggle altar that's got things that represent your path or the deity you're trying to honor or the ancestors you're trying to honor mm -hmm. and nobody will know that it's anything but well on the topic of uh like altars hidden altars There's um stars and moons all over your house right Sorry. i love that yeah. no um somebody or i had read somewhere uh an altar within a drawer Oh, so you can yeah. shut it when you have oh, gas. Yes. yes. You know, I don't I don't think that's bad at all. Or you can open it whenever you, you yeah. uh, want to use it. But it can right. be uh, enclosed. That would be more for mm -hmm. guests and less for people who live with people. Yeah. But I think that's a good option as well. I agree. Yeah. And, um, you know, you've we have talked in the past. I have a, a travel altar I am creating. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also something, you know, whether you create one for yourself or purchase one from somebody that creates them, travel altar can have every little thing you need Excuse with you. Me. So if you're traveling to visit the in-laws and you mm -hmm. want to be able to go off by yourself and do something because maybe maybe you're visiting people at Christmas time and mm -hmm. you're going to be there during Yule and you want to be able to go whatever for Yule. So you have your little travel altar all ready and you pack it up with your stuff and you can secret away very easily and no one will think anything other than you're doing last minute Christmas shopping. Right. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So, um... Is there anything else you could think of? For, no. You know, I, ways? I, I, How do you guys practice your magic without other people like knowing? Like, okay, so like we've got practical magic, right? You know, and she's like, so talking about magic that's hidden, right? You know, my favorite scene in practical magic for hidden magic is when they catch her stirring her coffee. Oh, I love right? that. You know? Because uh, we really haven't talked about pop culture at all this oh, episode. Oh, no, we haven't, so, have we? You know, can you think of any pop culture where, like, so in Charmed, I love my favorite of their hidden magics is when Piper freezes everything. So they oh, get my to God, yeah. And, do shit, and then they're like, and get they're back like, in the position. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then unfreeze and everybody's like... Did I experience a glitch in the Matrix? Right. <laughs> I love that. I love oh my that. god, that's what the glitch in the Matrix is. It's, it's just charm. Witches. It's, it's witches. just witches. <laughs> oh my god, I love, like, somebody had tweeted uh, telling people to watch our glitch in the Matrix episode, and they quoted, like, do witches control the Matrix? And oh, I, was I just love like, that. Oh my god. Do they? <laughs> do we? Do we, guys? Anyway. I don't know. Uh, can you think of any other pop culture? Um, that fits you in? know, I mean, practical magic to me, just because of the name of the movie in and of itself, really fits in with this episode. But then again, Charmed, from the same aspect, like they are hiding. They have they to are. hide. Their whole, like their whole thing is they have to hide, right? Well, you have to realize also, not pop culture, but a little bit of history. Yeah, we a have lot to hide. of people had to hide yep. and do magic mm -hmm. in the mundane. Yes, they know? did, and that's why we get so many folk traditions that like you said if you, your grandmother knew that she practiced right she would be like i do not know such thing but right. really she does because she it was bells passed down on the hidden. doors bells oh. on the doors exactly like my grandparents like through the russian Collecting stuff hagstones. passed down all the ancestor worship you know oh right absolutely yeah. you know collecting hagstones uh, a lot of people in the south especially near creeks do that because it looks cool right but they have their own property Right, exactly. And just, I mean, like, collecting seashells. You're collecting exactly. that ocean energy. You think you're just taking trinkets. Oh, I'm so sorry. I've no, yawned, like, fine. five times. No, it's... I, no, it's... It's all gloomy out, guys. It's it snowy, and we've got winter storms up brewing. Yeah. Yeah, you, you had to get up early. Yeah, I did. I didn't get up as early as I planned, which means I still have to go to the store at some point, so that sucks. Oh, no. For dinner? Yeah. Well, for just, like, we need laundry soap and random things, as well as dinner food. Um, but, you know, because winter storms, it's going to be fucking packed because everybody's oh, like, every, I need oh, my four, God. I need four loaves of bread. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I need eight jugs of milk. <laughs> I sigils. Love that we post. didn't talk about sigils. Hey, oh, sigils. sigils are a yeah, great way to hide salt your magic. Salt water or regular yeah. water. Put them 
on your walls, you know, depending. Oh, yeah. I, I guess a regular wall deer would probably right. be better if, if you you're renovating, you can put them under the paint. Exactly. There's you can so do a sigil things. in ink or in uh, pencil because pencil is graphite and it's a natural material. Oh, and absolutely. Amber loves to tote natural shit, guys. Put um, them on yourself. Yeah. With you lotion. And with oil. With lotion, lotion or oil. oil. Put them in your makeup mm -hmm. as you're putting your foundation yeah. on. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sigils are a great way to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, put them in the bottom of your shoes. Mundane. Nobody sees them. Yep. Yeah, nobody mm -hmm. sees them. Ha hidden magics. We got to do what you got to do. Right. Exactly. And not so everybody's honestly, out of the broom closet and that's okay. Right. That's There's okay. nothing wrong you with that, what guys. You, you got to do, do what you got to do. You got to do what you're comfortable with. Depending on where you live, you mm -hmm. may not feel safe being open exactly. with who you are. Or open with others about who you are. Maybe you're only open online with people about who you are. But watch out because there's some witch hunters online. Oh, absolutely. I Maddie somebody, got a message. I had somebody trying to bait me to meet up with him for $500. Sending me pictures of cash. Uh, could also have been sex trafficking. I mean, it's not funny. I mean, I'm being serious. It absolutely could have been. It could um, have been, but I read that guy's profile. And it, it sounded like a witch Christian. hunter. It was very Christian. It was very anti-witch. Yes, very much very so. Very And he wanted me to meet him uh meet up with him in to person. give him a reading absolutely, absolutely like demanded yeah. in person oh absolutely and so i'm sorry it's like witch hunter supreme right but right. not 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 in a good way not um, like and that's American kind of i guess what supreme. happens when you go a little bit bigger like we are on our facebook page uh with your faith so be careful about that yeah. um if you enjoyed this yeah. video definitely like and subscribe and check us Absolutely. out also um comment and let us know some other mundane ways yeah to... like how do you practice magic right. with nobody knowing what you're doing like right. if you're a practitioner exactly um, what are ways that you that you find effective yes. to practice your craft mm -hmm. without being, you know, seen, noticed, what have you, by mm -hmm. anyone around you. Right. And it gives you that, I'm sneaky. sorry, do you give it, yeah, little it's like that fun vibe. little sneaky, like, nobody knows what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> Salt your food, and then, then you've got, like, oh, dump in, and, like, or, an entire bottle of basil. Oh I'm, like, coming up with so much shit because, like, that we were talking about for the next episode. Accidentally spilling salt. Threw it in. I know, like, exactly. Like, so damn. we need to write these yes, things we do. down so we can get that episode done. Because <laughs> this originally was going to be a different kind of episode, yes. but... We didn't feel like we had enough fodder, but while speaking, we we're like coming up we with did. Them, right? Because yeah. I said salt, and it was like dumb and dumb. <coughs> you know, when he like throws the whole salt shaker uh -huh. over his head, and he's like, "Who oh the my fuck God. do that? Yeah. So dumb, fucking dumb." My husband loves that dumbass movie. It's so dumb, but it's, it is so it's, dumb. It didn't age it well, but dumber. it's funny. <laughs> I just feel like movies I thought were funny back then aren't funny anymore. Um, <coughs> Adam Sandler. <laughs> Like, I, I loved Billy Madison. I was like, haha, Billy Madison. I watched it lately. I'm like, this guy's fucking dumb. Like, this is not funny. Like, damn. But Chris Farley will always okay. be funny. So, we say Adam Sandler. And I go, I still think the water boy's funny. Oh, God. Um, I don't like Billy Ma Like, Billy Madison always got on my nerves, technically. Like, right. the movie's funny. The character, oh my I can't God. Stand Stop. him. Right. Um, and then what's the other one? Oh, uh, it's not Billy Madison. It's... Big Daddy. I, I, like, so I like Big Daddy, but we watched it so many times when we didn't have cable, and that was one of, like, the five movies we had. I don't watch it anymore. I, mm -mm. Oh, I like David Spade. I'm not going to lie. Love David Spade. Because I'm like, I love me some Chris Farley, like you said. I love like, Chris Tommy Farley. Boy, he'll Black always Sheep. be funny. Oh but I think God. the reason he'll always be funny is... I was is... never a Beverly Hills Ninja fan. Uh, yeah, I never liked that. But I love Tommy Boy and I love uh, Black Sheep. Dude, when he fucking falls down the fucking mountain. Cone on... heads. Oh, I'm my sorry. God. I love cone heads. I no. love him in cone heads. He's just like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, I just like love grand. cone heads in general. No. Oh, me too. She's Absolutely. Like, I am Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> yeah, Dan Aykroyd is one of my top. I love I, that motherfucker. I do. I have to I say. I can't think of, like, a Dan Aykroyd movie I don't like. But I, I think Black Sheep, like, is my favorite one because I love the part when he's rolling, rolling down. down. And, and he's, he's like, like holding, he's crazy like, ass. holding on to the fucking like tiny ass. He's like, stay 
strong little roots. <laughs> I would have to say, I do like, I love Tommy Boy, but I like Black Sheep a little bit more. I do Like, he gets Tommy stoned Boy. with the Rasta guys at the MTV Awards. Oh, my God. Kill. the shit out of his Yeah, brother. oh, my God. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, God, that's oh so funny. God. And they're all like, no, like, why did no, you say no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. I, oh yeah, my God, I love Chris Farley. He is one of Tommy my Tommy Boy is just sad. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm not a big fan. It is sad. Mm -hmm. I like it, but it is sad. It is, yeah. But I like it. Um, but, man, David Spade and Chris Farley. But I'm a uh, Rob Lowe fan. Oh, my God. He was such Shallow, a shitty person, though, in that movie. He's he like... Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. But, like, I love that movie. Um, Excuse I, me. Chris Farley and David Spade... In living in a van down by the river, skin. yeah, dude, it's my favorite, dude. I'm like, no I'm racking my brain trying to think of other Chris Farley movies. Well, that you I sit watch there regularly. and you think, how is this motherfucker so energized? There's a reason, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Not, I'm sorry, it, it's more. The, yeah, I can't do it. Right, I can't do we it. don't want to get. I don't know. Get I don't know. I don't want to get flagged. Yeah. Right. Right. And I don't right. know how to I imitate mean, that. There's a reason he's it's able to do yeah, fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he can do like the. Yeah. Fucking. He like, was lunch lady man. Right. Oh my god. I'm like. I remember as a kid I being like, him. damn, how is he doing that shit? It makes a lot of sense now. He was flying. Yeah. You know, but like. Um, he was great in Saturday Night Live. We yes. actually recently Love watched, like, a, it was, like, a, a compilation on YouTube, and it was all of them. When he's know. fucking dancing with Patrick Swayze. Oh, my God, that's my favorite one. <laughs> They're like, he dances so much better than Patrick Swayze. They're, like, he puts <laughs> him to shame. I love that so, hard so much. to choose these like, ones. I know, it's like, Patrick Swayze can't dance for shit. Chris Farley wins this motherfucker. I think Patrick Swayze was a stripper before he became a singer. A dancer. Well, but in that skit. Like, oh. whether he can in real life or not. In that and skit, he's like, Chris Farley is, like, like, winning that shit. And he's like, I'm just gonna rock this I shit. Know, he's and like, he's got like, it. And then Patrick Swayze's like... Showing. They take off their fucking shirt. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, like, he puts it between his legs. And Patrick Swayze's still like... I know, I know, like, what the, the fuck? What the fuck's going on? I love the and Folgers Chris, commercial. Like, I can't when they're like, we replaced your coffee with Folgers. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and, like, starts destroying the fucking... So, oh so God. funny. We oh. watched a lot of that. Uh, I like, Chris with, Farley. Oh, my God. I'm still, like, upset because, like, I know he's got more than three movies out there, but why can't I remember them? Oh, I know he does. So I, I, I'm he's got to, me. right? He has to. But, but all I can think is Beverly Hills Ninja and Black Sheep and Tommy Boy. But there's got to be more. Yeah, I know there, there has, has to be more. But a I've lot of it was them, Saturday sure. Night Live, too. Yeah, like, I love it. He was yeah. just so He was so funny, funny on Saturday Night Live. And I, yeah. he, he looked like somebody that... Sometimes when I'm watching a funny fucking movie, I'm like, I don't know how I could act with this person. What's his face? Jack Galifianakis? Is that his name? Oh, God. I could not Zach. act. Zach. Zach. Yeah. Zach. I could not act with him. We were watching The Fucking Hangover, and he's yeah. over there like, hey, you want to who let the dogs out? You want to let the dogs out? And I'm like, bro, how many oh. takes? How many takes? Do you not like him? Zach Galif. Yeah. Oh, my God. I just... He just... Uh, He's not, no, I don't think he's the funniest comedian out there. Like He, I he don't doesn't make much him. anymore, I don't think. But, like, he's one that it's, like, how many takes would it take me to actually, like, make a scene with this motherfucker? And Chris Farley is the same way. I'm just like, bro, I'm trying not to laugh at you. Because you're so ridiculous right now. Oh, okay. And they would, like, how they say it's so, like... They're acting, right. so yeah, they say it's funny as shit. Oh, yeah, God. I'm sitting here going, I would love to make a movie with Chris Farley. I could do anything with him. Like, you know, they always have like the 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 overweight guy with the skinny little pretty girl. Like, I could play his love interest. All oh day my long. God, I would all day oh, yeah, long, I Chris Farley. It. Please, wait, not anymore because you've right. been like grossly right. like decomposed at this point. But if you were still with us. I could probably your love work with Adam Sandler, I think. I think I could work with him. But, like, there are I See, I, that's where I think I would giggle too much. Because he's I got would. the stupid voices he does. You know what I mean? Well, I look, he has, like... A thing? A thing. Dude. Like, 50 first dates is... 
Oh, sorry, guys, that was probably loud in the microphone. Well, he was but... romantic in that one. He was. like, I, I like his serious stuff. He remade The Longest Yard. I did Bryson like that. And I That's still a that. comedy, though. I wouldn't call I it mean, too serious. It's, and it's got a serious more serious, you yeah. know. Um, I mean, it's not stupid, like... Water like boy. his usual yeah. stuff. But, yeah. you know... But everybody has to grow as an actor. Because, like, right. if you've seen Punch Drunk Love, I'm sorry. If you haven't, don't watch well, it. Well, it's like Jim Carrey. It's Perry. goddamn awful. I, it has all these awful noises in it. Oh, my God. Stop. Like, like, like loud... No, no. Like, music, like... You know when somebody gets the microphone too close to the speaker oh my God, in a really? music concert? Yeah. yeah. It's got all this weird-ass shit going on. It's horrible and the plot is horrible and he was trying to do something really serious it was horrible you hear that adam sandler punch drunk love somebody should have punched you I'm just saying. I love Jim Carrey. I love your big nose, though. Like, I think Jim Carrey falls into the category because he was, like, 90s Saturday Night Live, I think. Um, I think. You know, but, like, I, I... Damn, it didn't age well. It didn't age well. Ace Ventura? Jim Carrey. Oh, yes. Yeah. Some of the shit... Liar, liar's okay. I do like liar. I like, but I think... I, I mean, like it's liar, funny, liar. but it's also, like, again, more serious tone as opposed to... Ace Ventura, he's like fucking singing with his asshole. What the fuck is going? Like it's just not, <laughs> yeah. not even yeah. funny. Yeah, see, I can't watch that shit anymore. I'm with you. I <clears> don't. <throat> I used to watch it when I was a kid. Oh, a lot. we were just talking yeah, Dumb and Dumber. We did, yeah. I love Dumb and Dumber because I watched it as a kid and I loved it. But God, it's so fucking it's so stupid. dumb. I will still watch it if Corey has it on. His haircut alone. It was my first laugh. date. My first date was to go see Dumb and Dumber. Really? That's it has, like, weird nostalgia for me. Well, I mean, it's a good... Like, also, if any man ever showed up in one of them suits to pick me up for a date, I my heart would be. sing, yes. I I'd would be, be like, I let me know. change. Dude, my, I will match you. We'll, my we'll husband match. dressed up as the Hobbit to see the Hobbit movie. So, like, I yeah. definitely no. agree. Like I, I said, I was all like, I should have married a man like that. Not that I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm just saying, like... My personality, I'd have had fun with somebody like that. Right, it is. Because, like, so much fun. I want to, like, I keep trying to get Corey to dress up, like, uh, in, like, a pink flamingo suit, and I'm in a pink flamingo dress, and we do a photo shoot. Oh, my God. And he's, like, absolutely not. Yeah, my husband turned yeah. out, so he grew up, and, and he stopped doing fun mm. stuff fun like stuff, that. Yeah. But, like, you know, it was, it, I love the idea of like going on a date with somebody dressed as that you may or may not get laid if you dress up like that like I'm just saying like absolutely you gotta make me laugh well cause like I'm such a Christmas nerd I was like what if I buy you one of those full body Christmas suits and he's like mm -mm. oh my god you mean like a Fucker. onesie a onesie no oh. no 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 like you know the suits like it's a jacket and pants but it's like Christmas design. Oh my god! You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it's like an ugly Christmas sweater, but it's a suit. It's like men get older and they turn into. They're so not funny. They're not funny. He's like already looking forward to being the grumpy old man, which is why I say I married a hot Hank Hill, because. Oh <sighs> yeah. Jeez. But, but anyway, um, yeah, I think we were closing, and then we got like we did. Ramped well, we back didn't up. talk about we pop culture. So, oh, right, yeah, well, it's we not were, related. It is yeah, pop it is culture. pop culture. I it's realized true. I think pop culture is kind of one of our things. Yeah, we totally. talk about it every absolutely. Time. And I am yeah, a fan 90's of nineties strong, nineties yeah. Saturday Night Live. Absolutely love them. Love was never a fan of Kevin James. Is that his name? Big guy. Yeah, uh, King, King of Queens. Queens. Was he on Saturday Night? He was not. Okay. But he was still like I still live. I love okay. him in that category because he made grown up, so. Um but uh gotcha. there was the, no. the other I don't, one. Yeah. You don't lump him. I don't I lump only, him. I mean he's I watched like I liked King of Queens because mm -hmm. I love Leah Remini. Yeah, Rem, Rem, me too. Rem, 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 Remini. Check Remini. out her documentary. I'm yes, like, oh. absolutely. Fucking crackheads. Right. Just kidding, they're not crackheads, but they oh are. Oh my god, evil. they're gonna be at our house. Sorry. Uh, and now we don't have to worry about the government. Yes. I was gonna say we didn't say the word, Daddy, and then you said the word. Oh God, y'all are fucked up. They though. are you the know government. No. <laughs> they own the. No, I'm just kidding. But fuck uh, Scientologists. Oh, I said the word. Oh my God, that was Amber. That's fine. I love Leah Remini. She's bomb. If this gets me to talk to Leah Remini in some way. I she can like tell her. me if I I'm do. saying her name wrong because um, I feel like I am. So there was Kevin. Oh, the so other anyway, guy. He's yeah. so fucking funny. Uh, Bryson hates him so much. Uh, the hot chick. The animal. Oh, 
I fucking uh You Rob, don't like him? Rob Rob what's his Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider? Uh, so I don't dislike him, but uh, I said doesn't uh, like him. Something like he's a he's a He's the the male the male escort guy. What's that movie? Where he's the he's he's the he's like he's a male hooker. And I don't know, but it sounds so funny. I it love is, Rob Schneider. It is, but I can't. I just, I don't know. Rob Schneider gets on my nerves. Bryson's that way with him, too. But I can't. I loved the hot It's funny. When he was the his, hot His chick. movies are funny. Don't get me wrong. There's just something about him. Rubs me wrong. Um, Bryson doesn't like the way he looks. Like, but, like, I th- I don't I, like the way he sounds. Yeah. I, I mean, except that. in uh, Waterboy, where he's like, you, you can, can do it! it! Yes! <laughs> yeah, other than that, like, I don't know. He just gets on my nerves somehow. Um, the hot chick. Male Have gigolo. Bruce Di- Bru- Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo. I'll That's his, look that, that up. Yeah. Oh, you've never seen that? No. Oh, he's so, a male gigolo. So, and I gigolo, guess Jack Black and, like, is not nice. It, like, it's funny because, like, they stick him with all, like, the the uh, the oh. random women oh. that want to hook up. So, like, one lady's, like, eight foot tall. Oh, my God. And he's, like, rubbing her feet, and they're, like, this big. Oh, my God. Big. And, like, yeah, it's funny as shit. I'll like, one lady, that. like, so funny. I don't remember. She, like, wants him to, like, eat cookies with her or something. I don't know. It's funny as shit. That sounds good. It's, yeah, yeah, Deuce like. Bigelow, male gigolo is the first one, and then Deuce Bigelow, European gigolo is the second one, I'm pretty sure. That sounds funny. I'll have to watch I that. don't know for sure if I've seen the second one more than once, because I have almost no recollection of mm-hmm. it. First one I've seen a couple times. It's funny. I just... Rob Schneider. I just... Bryson's I guess I'm with way. Bryson. You I know, just... I, I do love the hot chick. It's so fucking hilarious yeah. when he's like a girl and he's yeah. like, I'm Jessica. And then the fucking guy's like, bro, you need to stay away from me. You're like a pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I've seen that one like once, maybe twice. Same with the animal. <laughs> Deuce Bigelow I've seen more times. I've seen him in other stuff. I think he's probably not, like, the main, main um, character. I don't know for sure. So, Jack Black is definitely not 90s, I don't think, right? It was early, more early 2000s. Or is he 90s? I feel like we saw him in the 90s, but let's see. Jack Black was in... Was Jack Black in Orange County? I'm pretty sure he was. Maybe he Maybe started and really took off in the yeah, 2000s. Yeah, like, I feel like it's the very late 90s where Jack Black came around, but... I like him. Maybe you know, he 2000s. is... He does kind of have that so annoying I love Shallow comedy. Hal. I love Shallow... I love you know Shallow what? Hal. But I, I also Shallow love Shallow when, Hal. Gwyneth Paltrow is... I Look, I know nothing about she's her currently, weird. so let's she's, not but talk it, about her vagina candle actress. or naming her kid Apple, but... She's a good actress. I love her in so many movies. Oh, she was a movie Marvel. called Sliding Doors. Mm-hmm. Love it. So good. It was like an indie British movie. It's so fucking good. Um, if you've never seen it, it's so good. It's about like, it's about alternate universes and how your life can go differently based wow. on That's one so- moment. Wow. Yeah, you should watch it. It's it so good. good. Sliding doors. So good. I, I do like Shallow How. That is more t- early 2000s. Mm-hmm. I think it has a good... Uh, theme. School of Rock. I, I love, love, I love School of Rock. Early 2000. Fuck, yeah. I love School, I love love school. Rock. But um, I think Shallow Howe has a really good uh, message. theme or yeah. message. Mm-hmm. Um, I think his friend's a piece of shit asshole. What a fucking Jason dude. Alexander. Dude, fuck that guy. But you know what? Jason Alexander, he is always a dick, but he's, he does amazing as the dick of... Uh, the private dick in Duckman, oh, where he is a cartoon duck, and he has cartoon children. One of them is named Ajax. He's such a wiener. Why is he Ajax? always such a... No, no. His son's name is Ajax. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Why part the, of why I want to name my kid Ajax. Don't judge me. Why the um, fuck is he always a dick? I guess he's type. Maybe he just sounds like a dick, so yeah. He does. Maybe he really is a dick, and they're like, we can't see you as anything Any else. Thing. Yeah. But... Duckman is hilarious. Maybe not for everybody, but I love Duckman. You can only find it on YouTube these days. It used to be a Comedy Central show, but it's hilarious. I know. Yeah, Corn Fed is his pig sidekick. School of Rock is definitely, I think, one of the best Jack Black movies. I saw an interview yeah. with him, and he said it was his favorite and his like, most pri- like prized yeah. work. He spoke to so many kids. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's, he touched so many kids. I make that you joke. Watch me drink my I coffee. I make that and then joke say because it. it's a joke in, in the, the movie. movie. Yes, yes, um, I remember that. Um, I'll touch so many kids, and your kids have touched me. And they're like, <laughs> but in all seriousness, because of that movie, 
which I believe was totally a... I forgot about I think it was a that. play at first, a Broadway play. It either was at first or it, it became, became one. I think it became one from the movie. Um, I'm not positive, but I will say that I do love that movie. And oh, I it helped so many like, I feel music, like, music classes. I feel like schools. he was in Orange County with Tom Hanks's son, which was Tom Hanks's son's like breakthrough role. Mm. Um, and Orange County was a really good movie for... For me, as an older teenager, mm -hmm. I haven't watched it in over a decade, mm -hmm. and don't judge me based on what that movie's about. I don't even remember it anymore, guys. But yeah, I, was, like, I feel like that was one of Jack Black's first like big roles, was Orange County. We were talking about casting the, the uh, gods as one of our things, and, and I have to say, Jack Black is Dionysus to a fucking T for me. I mean, he's got the body shape. He's got the fucking I can see that. party attitude. I can see that. I can Absolutely. See that. I can see that. Like, that is just my number yeah. one for Dionysus. I could. Uh, yeah. It's funny. I, I you like know, because he's fucking funny. You know what I mean? Cause I, yeah, because I could also see him as Loki, the trickster and all that. Oh, shit. Yeah, that'd be funny. Um, but yeah, mm. definitely big fan yeah. of Jack Black. Love yeah. Jack Shallow. I love Jack Black on working as um, Adam's dad. Fucking can't stand Adam on working, but not working. I, Workaholics. I, I always. Stop. Oh, he's a dad in that. I haven't. I've so only seen the he first only season. like guest stars as uh, Adam's dad. But yeah, in Workaholics, Jack Black plays Adam's dad huh. uh, in a couple episodes. And casting wise, really good. Right. Oh, uh, also, fuck yeah. is that not his son in real life? Right. Okay, like, I don't think I so. I have but. literally, I saw him in Pitch Perfect, and my mom, because we were watching it as a family, was like, bro, is Jack Black his father? He, I don't he talks so. like Jack Black. He, I'm pretty sure I looked it up because I thought uh, the I, same I, thing. I, I and mean, I'm pretty sure, like, if you look up Adam Levine or... Is Adam Levine. Yeah. Please get together with Rebel Wilson. Please, you two are so fucking fantastic together. Like, I don't know <laughs> if you've seen them together. In almost every one of her movies, he, like, co-stars. Or he's, uh, like, got a little I think thing. I've seen, like, commercials to that effect. Because we watch him in Workaholics. But he is my least favorite character. Sorry. <gasps> I just like him because I like the chemistry like he Durs. has with Rebel Wilson. It's so amazing. Like Durs is perfect. such a douchebag. Is he the one with the hair? No, that's Blake. Oh my god, dude. Blake is whiny as I've fuck. I've seen Otherwise, one Blake would be my favorite. But he's so whiny in so many episodes. There so was a video Durs. he uploaded. It was a uh, improv. <clears throat> and he was on the fucking... Um, treadmill in his garage you know what i'm talking about he's like i'm a really nice guy okay guys watch this and he's like hey you dropped this hey you dropped this hey you dropped this you and he's like running I can and then picture. He falls and he like falls and like slides he's like hey you dropped this <laughs> And I think Blake. that was oh before, like, his big break. And he was, like, just, like, this is an improv mm. scene. And it was, like, fucking hilarious. Totally understand why he's a comic, like... A comedian. Boom. Like, that shit. Yeah. And it's stupid. Like, yeah. Stupid. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Like, Blake, he, he's almost my favorite, but his character's a little too whiny for me. <laughs> Durs is such a douchebag. But, like, they're all douchebags. Like, <laughs> let us be clear. I don't know if you watch Workaholic. I've seen, um, but I, I prefer at... I don't like it because I like Edwin Levine as the sweet kind of. Oh like yeah, he's not. I fucking can't stand him. He's, he's a such dick. a dick. Hate him. He played. Hate him. There was a romantic movie. If you haven't seen, I it. love Jillian though from Workaholics. Oh really? The the flighty blonde assistant to the boss. Yeah. Um, if you haven't seen it, I recommend it. Probably won't watch it, but I'll recommend it anyway. Uh, it's a movie with Rebel Wilson before she lost the weight. As the main romantic character, the main, the lead, which was really breakthrough because a lot of bigger women like Rebel Wilson, and she was pretty bigger, like myself, if not a little bigger, um, was the main character, the main lead. And it was a love triangle between her, Chris Hemsworth, and that was part of like the breakthrough of it, and uh, Adam Levine. Adam Levine was her best friend, and Chris Hemsworth was like this romantic, I'm going to whisk you away, and she chose Adam Levine. But like... I think I've seen commercials for Oh, that. it's really good, actually. It was really funny. Like, 
What's the, it but, the, but what I love about it is they didn't make the funny jokes. We, oh, Chris Hemsworth fell in love with Rebel Wilson. What? Right, that right. wasn't the butt of the jokes. The butt of the jokes was how fucking stupid Chris Hemsworth was. Because instead of the pretty dumb blonde, you've got the pretty dumb blonde that's Chris Dude, Hemsworth. Yeah. yeah, it was so funny. That reminds me of him in Cabin by the Cabin in the Woods. Because, like, he's... <laughs> really smart but because of like the movie like the plot of the movie they make him like get stupider as it goes on oh my God. and he becomes a stupid jock even though originally he's a smart one it's funny. So funny yeah cabin he's by the good. woods is a great horror movie. he's he's a good one and yeah. i need to see yeah. that well anyway I guess anyway yeah i think we yeah talking. so you guys are probably gone but if not Hi, Melissa. Hi, Dallin. Thank you guys for being our patrons on Patreon. Yes, and if you'd like to get a shout out just yeah. like they do, check out our Patreon, which will be a link in the description. Mm -hmm. Like and subscribe if you haven't already Please. on YouTube. Yeah. 